Greetings, you've landed at the VUC, IP Communications and VoIP Community. We would like to thank Simwood.com for their support. Simwood can turn you as a developer into a telco. Our hosted PBX is from OnSIP.com. You can go to GetOnSIP.com for a URL people can click to call you. We've been privileged over the last five years to be using the best conference bridge on the planet. Yes, I'm talking about ZipDX.com, full-color, full-featured, full-HD conference bridge. Our website, VUC.me on the web, is hosted by Bluehost.com. And our worldwide local rate dial-ins are from Voxbone.com. Okay, this is, he says as he reads the slide in front of his face, VUC 578 for January 29th, 2016. And it is entitled, appropriately so, More Winners from Tad's Paris 2015. Wow, that's a year that's almost forgotten already. But I'm going to turn you over after one second here. I want to make a quick plug for EFF, EFF.org. Go give them a couple bucks if you can. They do some interesting things, and they... Uh, help us out in many ways. I'm going to introduce Mr. Alan Quayle, who is not Anthony's brother. I know a lot of you have written in about that. Alan, take it away. <laughs> thanks so much, Randy. Uh, and thanks, Michael, as well, for all your help and support in getting this together. So uh, this is part two of uh, running through some of the TADHAC winners that uh, took place in December last year. It was only just over a month ago, but you know how it is with Christmas and New Year's. Uh, it just feels like, you know, it's such a long time ago. I just want to give a quick plug before we get uh, and run through uh, with uh, some of the winners. We have Tad Hack Tokyo coming up on the 13th and the 14th of uh, February. Uh, so that's going really well. Close to uh, 40 uh, developers signed up there, so really looking forward to uh, what's going to happen in Tokyo there. And we also have Tadhack London. That will be on the 9th and 10th of April before the WebRTC Global Summit. And just a little plug for uh, we've started the planning for uh, Tadhack Global. That's going to be on the 14th to the 16th of October. You just choose two out of the three days because some locations can't operate on a uh, Saturday. Others want to operate on a uh, Friday and a Saturday rather than on a uh, Sunday. So we just a little bit of flexibility on dates. We've got well over 30 locations around the world that are going to be uh, running Tad Hack. So that's going to be a uh, really exciting event. And just a plug to one of your sponsors, uh, Randy, for uh, this event, Foxbone, are going to be involved again in uh, Tad Hack Global and uh, Tad Summit, so really excited about that. So we have three excellent hacks. We're going to uh, kick off with uh, Eric and his uh, colleague, uh, Michael, uh, who did a excellent hack using Vox Implant, and it was called Speakback. So uh, without further ado, I'm just going to hand over to Eric it's uh, over to you to uh, describe uh, what you built. Well, thanks, uh, Alan, for the introduction. Uh, we went to Paris with a team of six people uh, for our first uh, hackathon, which was the TED Hack in Paris. And before that, we actually thought about several ideas to be uh, building. And the winning idea was that uh, if people are presenting stuff in front of an audience, Sometimes people tend to ask questions which are not repeated by the presenter. And basically all the audience doesn't really hear the question. So we built uh, a hack for fixing just that, where at the beginning of the presentation, you will get a QR code in your screen, which you can scan by the, by the app we've built, and which basically uh, joins you at the session. And then um, when you have a question, you can type in your uh, mobile phone just a few words of the question you want to ask. And in some kind of overlay over the presentation, the presenter sees which questions are pending in the audience. And if he sees the time fit to answer the questions, he can just click them 
and then uh, WebRTC connection is set up by using our Vox implant sponsored uh, facilities. <coughs> And then uh, one from the audience is able to ask his question uh, for everyone in the audience to hear and see because his, uh, his recording is overlaid on the presentation so everyone watching the screen can see it. Um, we've built it using several technologies like uh, for instance we've built a, a .NET, ASP.NET web service for some kind of backend. We use the Vox implant tools for the actual video conferencing. And we've used um, PHP for displaying the QR code. Um, maybe Michael can elaborate more on that. Uh, excuse me, about what? About the, uh, about the technologies we've used. Oh, yes. Uh, well, we've used uh, a, a HP.net uh, website to uh, host the presentation in. And uh, on, the on the website, you uh, see a QR code. People scan it with a mobile device. And on the mobile device, there must be a native app running. Uh, we've developed a native app uh, on the scene. And uh, when people scan uh, the, QR the QR code with a mobile device, Eric already told, uh, a connection is made uh, via a, a custom-made API and a Fox implant. And... Uh, yeah, it connects with uh, with the session. Uh, the speaker can choose which question it will answer because via the API, via the uh, web app, via the app, the native app, you can insert a question, and the speaker can then choose which question he would like to answer. Uh, when he clicks on the question he wants to answer, a connection is set up with the API, with uh, the native app, and the website. And uh, via Fox Implant, uh, yeah, via Fox Implant and WebRTC, uh, the video and the audio is being uh, pulled and pushed between two uh, devices, between the web uh, website and the native app. So that about that. Thank you, uh, Michael. Um, well, we have uh, displayed our solution at the end presentation at the, the hackathon. And we actually got a working solution, which we yeah really incorporated into our presentation with some uh, colleague of us uh, asking the last question of our session which we have joined, and it actually worked quite well. Uh, when we went back to our headquarters in Breda, we've uh, told about our uh, price and the uh, solution we've built, and we actually are getting time to elaborate on that even further and create a, an out-of-the-box solution for everyone to use. Because uh, at the hackathon we learned from several people that they are interested in really using the solution. And of course what we build is built in a hackathon so it's not production code but we are getting time on our hands to create it uh, with production code. So Alan should be able to use it on the TED Summit. Excellent. Yeah, I think this is a, a great example of using telecom capabilities at a hackathon to create just show you know show capability and get people to you know, see it working and you know it solves such a critical problem in so many conferences that you know questions get asked and quite often you know the person thinks they don't need a microphone because their voice is loud enough. Well, guess what? The microphones you know, the, for the video don't pick it up, and so many good questions are lost. And this, I think, is a great way of not just for people in the room. The key with Speakback is you could be anywhere. You're watching the presentation online, and you can be asking questions just like somebody in the room. So we're really excited to uh, add this into uh, uh, TAD Summit. Also, some of the other TAD Summit uh, partners, uh, we have like a little uh, app. Uh, for the uh, c conference itself with all the timings and uh, sort of speakers and stuff and this could be added in there as well so it makes it very easy for people to be able to uh, ask questions using their mobile devices regardless of where they are so really excited about this and the fact that CM Telecom is giving its people the time to make this production so uh, you know, we're looking forward to tracking this through this year and uh, helping the team you know make this a success and drive 
you know, uh, business using telco APIs. And James, you know, uh, Andy, you got any questions for James Eric? A question. Well, yeah, I've got a question. Is can we do a really quick live demo of this now? Put you on the spot. <laughs> I've anticipated this question, but no, at the moment we cannot. Oh, of, the, of the simple oh, fact that we have several software disciplines built into the hack, uh, which we haven't uh, really put up here for a live demo, so we cannot show them. It's still on our laptops. Of course, the code is uh, checked in an repository, but we haven't got a live working demo set. Okay. But we will see it, I'm sure. And you know what? This is a, a really good application which uh, is useful to, to many people. So we really do want to see it built and debugged and got out there. It's good stuff. Exactly. And this is a trend we're seeing more and more of hacks being created that are then getting taken out into market. I mean, we started, I mean, even since um, uh, the first TAD hack we ever did back in 2014, we had uh, Extragene over in Sri Lanka. They founded a company based around a hack they created. And I'm just you're really excited to see more and more hacks being created that then get out to market. So is there any other questions uh, for Eric before uh, we move on to uh, Vince? If not, well, we can always ask uh, as uh, we uh, sort of go through the uh, show. So. Vince, over to you. Just Interesting. Just before you, just before okay, you go for Andy. There, there was just one thing. I, um, it should be pointed out that, uh, that the hacks themselves, all of these, are available on your YouTube channel. Absolutely. Good, very good point. So just go to tadhack.com and then go to the blog, and uh, it's all there. Or you can actually uh, uh, click on 2015. You can go to the uh, Tadhack. Um, Oh dear, Paris uh, website and all the contents there, or just search on YouTube. Just search in YouTube, Tadhack, and all the videos are uh, available on the uh, Tadhack YouTube channel. So we're trying to make it as easy as possible to be able to see and share this content because it was it was an excellent uh, presentation and all developed within the 24 hours in uh, December in uh, Paris. So again. Eric and team. That was an excellent job. Thank you so much. So moving on, Vince, over to you. Tell us what you built. Thanks, Alan. Yeah, so uh, for me, I built, I, I was actually uh, lucky enough to be a uh, remote participant for uh, TEDx Paris, and what I built was a SMS-based uh, customer response system. So basically, uh, for me, going into these, these hacks, it's always about finding inspiration and finding an idea before you go into it. So actually, I, I wasn't planning on participating, but that week, I was, I was Christmas shopping with my wife, and we were in the mall, and uh, I saw an advertisement for downloading the mall directory to an app. And so, I, sure enough, I tried to download it, and it was, it was huge. It was just full of bloat. I'm like, well, you know, why do I have to download this huge app using my data just to figure out what the hours are? So, I mean, the inspiration kind of has been coming from past hacks. Uh, I know, you know, using bots for similar type of situations isn't new, but so I've, I've kind of leveraged that, and it's not an original idea. But really, I was I was looking for uh, I was looking for an excuse to to tie in IBM Watson. IBM Watson right now I think is just completely huge, and I I just really needed an excuse to to tie in Watson. So basically, I just wanted to uh, to tie that in. So my idea was to connect businesses to their customers, and so being able to my, in my example was ordering a, a pizza. Mm -hmm. So uh, instead of downloading a a pizzeria's application. You would actually just text in your order, and the, the bot would essentially walk you through that. But a bot is only as good as you program it. So my idea was to extend that was to um, have a, a mechanism where if the bot didn't know an answer, if it didn't have high enough confidence in the answer, that it would go ask the owners or go ask the business to say, hey, I don't know what this answer is. Can you help me out here? So there's, there's that type of feedback learning that I, I built in the back end. But essentially what I, I used was Telesax to... Uh, to handle all the, the service provider integration. So Telesax is the front end to all the, the, the SMSs. From, from Telesax, I actually push it up to a PHP script. So once PHP gets its hands on, on the actual raw data, the raw SMS, 
that's when I start uh, feeding it up to Watson and, and trying to figure out what they're actually looking for or what they're asking. So from PHP, I throw it up to Watson. Watson has a great REST interface that just makes it super easy. So I push it up to, through REST to, to Watson, ask it questions, get responses. Um, sometimes I massage the data a little bit to make it a little bit more user-friendly, but then I throw it back down to, uh, I throw it back down to uh, Telestacks in order to, to send it back out to the user. Everything is everything is uh, stateful, so uh, everything is pushed out to a MySQL uh, MySQL ba database. So you can go back and, and reference maybe a previous conversation, and, and maybe if they asked a previous question or a previous order, you could actually go reference that from from another time. So uh, I think that's about it from the technology side. It, it was Telestacks, PHP, uh, REST up to the Watson, and then a MySQL for for maintaining the conversation state. Cool. David. Go for it, James. Um, can I order a pizza for using your app? Or well, your... you could you could order, but I don't know if I could deliver to you. <laughs> well, you might have to eat it, but I think it would work. Just order me something good, no anchovies. No an an anchovies. Yeah. Well, okay. Tell me what to do, and I'll do it. I'll screen share. Yeah. Uh, so actually, it's hard coded to be my phone and and my wife's phones for the for the well, business. So she's the, the program business. my phone to be your phone. Oh, I'm not supposed to do that these days. Oh, yeah. Well, you're letting out your secrets, James. So no, I mean it was it was actually the inspiration came on a Wednesday. I think I signed up for the hackathon on Friday. And this this whole thing, I mean, it, it just kind of proves how accessible these these APIs are now, right? I mean, I, I knew nothing about Watson uh, leading into that. I, I just wanted an excuse to use it. But going into it, it was just so easy. And I think it took me you know 18 hours, and and that was just kind of. I was I was hardening and making it look cool, and I actually signed up for a three dollar domain name, gave it a, a pretty snazzy name, the Just Text Us, and and that away we went. I mean, this this stuff just makes it super easy. I mean, the Telestacks being able to handle it, PHP. I mean, that's just a staple in everybody's kind of knowledge there, and then RESTful. It's it's just it, it just made it all kind of come together. Yeah, I think it's just a great example of how easy it's become to mash up these capabilities. And I just want to point um, on IBM Watson. One of the evangelists there is uh, Michael Ludden. Now, Michael used to be uh, one of the evangelists in Nexmo. And actually, Michael, I was trying to get Michael over to the first ever TAD Summit. So it's one of those that it is a very small world in the, uh, you know, amongst the uh, evangelists. And I think what you put together was just a great example. Yes, we've had um, uh, Thomas Howe talk about uh, bots and the open source project he's created to make it really easy to uh, reuse all the code that he's created to create and build your own bots with all the integrations around there. In fact, we did a uh, TAD Summit Revisited uh, earlier this month where he went through and explained a little bit more around uh, the importance of bots, not just across SMS, but in terms of multi-channel interaction. Because it's not just using SMS, because that's ubiquitous, but it's also using like just IP messaging or any messaging platform. And that's essentially how I designed my idea was that the PHP can have inputs from anywhere. SMS, it could be uh, Facebook integration, it could be WhatsApp, whatever you want, it could be in there. Exactly. But yeah, I mean, that, actually, I, I sat through a lot of Thomas's his, uh, presentations, and he, he, he's really well. He presented it really well, and he actually inspired me to do some, stuff, some of this cool. stuff. And uh, just to your point, too, um, actually, some of the... the Social media outreach for Tad Hack reached a IBM Watson evangelist, and she reached out to me as well. So just kind of talking about the integration, my feedback. So yeah, I mean, word word was spread pretty well, and and I I synced up with her and gave her some good advice. And yeah, I mean, it was it was great. It was really good. So yeah, word spread pretty quick. Excellent. Oh, I I didn't know about that. That's excellent news. Thanks so much, Vince. Any other questions to uh, Vince on his hack? Again, congratulations. Thanks so much for showing that you can oh, win I'm, I'm and win remotely. <laughs> yeah. Andy, yeah. Andy's there. Yeah, is, is, is the code available? Are you open sourcing all the code for this? Good question. So I, I've gotten that request on the YouTube channel for the same, the same question. I haven't put it open source yet. Uh, I actually got a lot of good feedback from, from the community saying this is a great idea. We should kind of extend on that. So I'm a little hesitant on putting it out there because I might want to do something with it in the future, but uh, it's not out of the question. So, back to the back to the original question of looking for uh, funding. You know, if you got anybody, let me know. <laughs> well, there, there are always ways of using these things to, to, to good effect. Perhaps we should talk a little more um, away from this particular forum. Sounds good. 
cool. And there is an open source project, Greenbot, if you want to uh, you know, take advantage of uh, that code base there. Cool. Again, thanks so much, Vince. Let's move on. Karel, very interested to uh, hear about your experiences with uh, Tadak Paris and the excellent hack you produced that won the True Phone Apides and Telestax Prize. So you had three sponsors' technologies. So very interested to see how you mash them all together. Over to you, Karel. Hi. Well, thank you very much. Well, it, it was great first having you in Paris because uh, you know I, I've been following Tad for for quite some time, and it was the first time we were in France, so I we really had to to participate. Um, but I a few slides that I will share with you guys um, to to show a little what we did. So we did something we called Call Me, uh, and Call Me comes from the idea that. Uh, uh, you know, for, first, you know, who we are. It's a team of people. Uh, we are all working on Libon. Uh, Libon is a over-the-top application uh, that has been developed by uh, Orange, and that provides a voicemail and voice over IP calls and uh, IM. And one of the part of Libon that we like was around the transcription of voicemail, and, and that's uh, come to what we we hacked for Tadak in Paris. So the problem we are looking at is that. Globalization now means that you, you do business with a lot of people in different countries. But you still have one phone and usually one phone number. Uh, and for your customers, your partners, your clients to contact you, you know, they need to call you internationally, which is not always uh, very uh, easy to do and it's you know, costly. Um, so we wanted to see how we can have a, a global uh, offer that uh, make it uh, feel like you are local everywhere you go. So what's our solution? Well, we used local numbers in different countries, and that was thanks to uh, true f uh, to the true phone uh, numbers uh, for the UK. We also play with some uh, French number actually from next month, uh, uh, and those numbers should call your main uh, phone. Uh, but what we wanted to do also is to make it even easier. So we provide a way to use a web link, and that's through uh, the Apide solution, where you know you just click. And that will call the phone of the the person you're trying to reach. Uh, all of that, and then go into Telestax uh, solution. So in case you're not reachable, then you can have access to a voicemail. And then we use some transcription, so the voicemail will be then sent by email. And uh, we did even a little further than that because uh, we use some video voicemail. So I will talk about that in a second. But so the idea was, you know, there was one uh, demo was you call a UK number. And that was provided by TruePhone, and that will uh, go to Telestax. That will ring uh, my actually my mobile phone. Uh, that was how we did the demo. And then we had another um, web page uh, which where you will be able to click, and that will call through the API, the, API, uh, the Telestax platform that will forward that to my phone number again, so you could talk to me. And in case I was not available, the kind of cool things we did is that you will click on the link, you'll be able to watch a video of myself. So instead of having a, a you know, voice greeting saying, hi, I'm not available, you could actually see myself telling you, hi, I'm not available, They'll leave me a, a video message after the beep. And you could left me a video message. And what I would get then, I would get an email where you could have the link to the video, so I could watch uh, the video of you uh, to letting me know why you call, but we also pass the audio. So within the email, you would have a web file where you could uh, listen to the just to the voice if you don't have a you know a screen uh, available or you just want to get your email quick. And within the email, we also had the transcription of that audio, so you could actually uh, you know read the message if you are really in a hurry and you don't have time to watch the video or to listen to the sound of my of the the voice of the the person that is giving me a message. So that, that was the, the cool thing we, we did. Uh, and you know, I think it it's really, uh, was very easy to do. Uh, we saw that the, the way you could do that uh, using the, the APIs available was, uh, I mean, none of us are actual developers. So uh, I'm a product person. Uh, the couple of people that I was working with are mostly uh, VoIP engineers, uh, so uh, typical uh, techo guys but not actual uh, you know, uh, developers. And we were able in, in 24 hours to, to 
take all those pieces and to put them together. I think one, one of the things that I, I found very interesting looking at you know the, the different TAD uh, TADACA uh, participating is the the way how much it's become easy to mash up different services and put them together because you just have the API and you know REST uh, and, uh, as uh, you, you were discussing earlier with some uh, PHP code or very simple uh, uh, connections. You, you get all of those different services to talk to each other. Uh, and one of the things I'm actually looking at is uh, you know doing something uh, around the Watson also because uh, with the uh, all the AI uh, services that uh, are now available, it's becoming more and more uh, efficient to actually bring intelligence into the the process. And uh, so I'm considering uh, soon launching my own company, uh, and uh, that will be uh, something around what I've done for the Tadak uh, Summit, but with a, a little uh, more uh, behind that. So hopefully I will be able to talk more about that uh, during the next that summit. Excellent. No, that will be great. Again, it's those stories of people real you know, creating an idea, getting real market feedback, and inspiring them to create companies, to launch commercial services. So again, Corral, this is a you know, it's heartening to see uh, this story uh, emerging. And absolutely, Tad Hack Tad Summit is all about helping you get to your partners, get to your customers, getting that you know uh, awareness in the market around uh, what your plans and your services are. So that was a, a great act. And with three sponsors, uh, you know, were winning across uh, all three of them. So I don't know, Andy or uh, James, anything you wanted to uh, add to uh, what uh, Corel's just described? Well, uh, what we liked about it was the fact that it was a very nicely formed, it was a polished um, uh, app which um, w was almost at the standard where you could actually put it up and, uh, and market it. Um, it was very well formed but then again the team of people that you had working on that was a pretty high powered team so we would expect them to uh, come up with something half decent. Exactly and that's another important point is uh, teams. Uh, especially if there's diversity in the teams. Uh, uh, so it's not you know, just developers or coders. You've got product people in there. You've got user experience people. It creates not only a uh, very polished uh, hack, but also a very polished presentation. I think that uh, across actually all three uh, hacks uh, that we're describing today was uh, very common. And another theme, I mean, Vince has made reference to it, uh, Corral's made reference to it, is you do no longer need to be a hardcore coder. It's, you don't need to be basically a C++ expert. You know, the tools are there, and a lot of it is scripting, so it's just combining functions together. And uh, with that simple concatenation, you can create very impressive services. And one of the themes I think we're going to see across many hackathons and for sure uh, with Tad Hack is the use of uh, Watson uh, for taking all this free form input and being able to do smart intelligent things on top of it. So really looking forward to the hacks that we see through uh, the, uh, this coming year. Okay. So if there isn't any other questions we wrap that up pretty quick Randy. A nice short sweet review of uh, three uh, very good hacks that you can see everybody's looking at how they can make it commercial, which is exactly what we need to see in hackathons. It's not just showing a cute piece of technology, it's you know, helping people you know, build businesses, personal development, and just create cool stuff. And just to mention, we will have the last part of uh, reviewing the uh, hacks uh, coming out of uh, Tadak Paris on, I think, Friday the 4th of March. So there we will um, see some very interesting hacks. We'll have Rian uh, and Stephen presenting on some very interesting work they did on looking at the uh, WhatsApp API and just all the personal information that uh, is accessible there. But Randy, so back to, to you. We are going to have uh, a approximately 20% female participation, I think. Something like that, right? Yep. Absolutely. I was so jealous of Free Switch because they actually have a woman on their, uh, on their uh, I don't know about team, but she's a part of, Kathleen is part of their uh, 
presentations each of their conference. So mm -hmm. they have a permanent member. We're still looking. She's a key I, member of their team, actually. She's yes. Well, I, I, I didn't know that. Okay. But I know that she's uh, always on the conference, and that's already something. Uh, I would propose that we recruit Mira, but maybe uh, maybe Rand, that she, maybe she'd be willing to come in. Alan, it's always a pleasure to have you. I just wanted to mention that I'm extremely irritated by the fact that someone thought you were me. <laughs> I don't know if that's flattering or the opposite. I'm not sure. But you do have a nice beard, and that was the compliment that was made. Okay. Directed Thank at me, so but I'm redirecting that compliment <laughs> to you. So um, other than that, I thought James was going to speak for Truphone. If he did, I was asleep. Well, what, what, what more can could we have? Could we, uh, could we, could we that, somehow... Yeah, we're looking forward to the, the 2016 series uh, uh, and moving forward. In fact, um, it's probably a, a good point to get in a, a yet another plug for Camera Elio World as well. Ah, absolutely. Um, which I know it's not TAD, but um, uh, it's the one place in Europe where, where we seem to get all of the people who seem to do all of the really good stuff. So uh, I know Daniel is listening on um, on ZipDX. Um, Daniel, you do a brilliant job. Just as Alan does with it with Tad, um, yes. Hammer Elio World is the one big th um, developer thing that you've got to go and see. And it's always arranged in to take place in Berlin at a time when um, all the hotels are all empty. The whole thing is <laughs> remarkably inexpensive, and I've just been looking at booking uh, my British Airways flights with four days in a hotel, and the whole thing comes to about two hundred and sixty pounds. So that's wow! Like fly, flying out of Heathrow, it's incredibly cost-effective to to do that. No, yeah, no, that's great. Absolutely. Uh, so it's so cost-effective that even my dear darling Mrs. B with red hair. He's going to turn up for the end of it, so that'll frighten a few people away. All right. I think this is a good idea, James, to um, do a little bit of a commercial for Kamaiya World because we're all going to be there. All of the main – well, I haven't checked with everybody yet, but a lot of our main uh, participants from VUC are going to be there. And as I posted in IRC, anyone within range, if you're in Europe or with your in, within range for Berlin to Berlin – I'm guessing Mr. Duffett might be there. Do you know anything about that, James? Or right. maybe? I think he might well be. It's oh, a bit so like um, ClueCon in the States, in that Camera Elio world is much, much more than just Camera Elio. Uh, whilst yes. Camera Elio is one of those technologies that sits behind lots of things and just makes stuff work. Mm -hmm. um, there are so many other things that sit within the same ecosystem. Um, that uh, I guess only about what 25% of it is actually Camera Elio. The rest is is other exciting stuff. There's a there's a lot of things to say about it, and Berlin is a fantastic place. I've been there a couple of times now, maybe three even. It's wonderful. You can even bring your significant other, and they will not be bored while you're stuck <laughs> indoors, as we always are in all these. Uh, Con yeah. these uh, conferences. And the uh, venue for, is once again the wonderful Fraunhofer Institute. Lovely place uh, and we have the, the center for it in that big atrium which is large enough that you can fly your um, drone. drones without <laughs> killing too many people. Well, you may be beheading Dennis uh, Kirsten if he's uh, there. He'll probably be there. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, really interesting people there. And I want to repeat what Daniel said, which is you can go to Kamaiyo World. You're going to want me to spell that, though, and that is K-A-M-A-I-L-I-O-W-O-R-L-D.com. And, and yeah, for the Americans out there, that's Camaelio, none of this Camaelio. Yeah, it's not Camaelio, it's not Camelio, it's Camaelio. But anyway, 15 years of Camaelio development, 2001 to 2016. And you probably should see a few uh, team members of the Liban team because uh, some of our developers are actual uh, Camaelio contributors. And it is also part of uh, what's in the behind the scene uh, uh, framework of Liban. Exactly. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Carella. And uh, I'm going to just open it up and ask if anybody has any questions or comments. Otherwise, we'll close this off and move on to the mature audiences version. 
So, anybody, uh, let me try to get my ducks in a row, as we say. There's Fred. Anybody on IRC? Anyone? James, anybody have any comments before we go or questions? Andy, Eric, Alan. Just well, a well, thank you, Randy, for having us. Uh, yeah, okay. I, I have uh, one question for, for Alan because I really can't remember all this, you know. I'm getting, getting yep. old. Um, can, what have we got in terms of tax hacks coming up this year? Yep. There Let are me go a good few, question. Good thank question. You. Thank you so much, Andy. So, the one coming up uh, in a couple of weeks' time is Tatak Tokyo. Oh, Tatak Japan, sorry. It's actually going to be in Kawasaki, but it's very close to Tokyo. Uh, then in April, we have Tatak London. Uh, that just before the WebRTC Global Summit. Then we have Tatak Montevideo. Uh, that's going to be in Uruguay uh, at the big university that they have there. The date is going to be sometime in May. We're getting that finalized. I'm working with uh, Fernando, who lives in Montevideo and is part of the Telestacks team to get that one ironed out. Then we have the summer to rest and relax. Then in October, from the 14th to the 16th, so it's the Friday, the Saturday, and the Sunday. The reason we're doing it over three days is some locations can't, uh, for a variety of reasons, uh, work on the Saturday. Also, for example, in Madrid, they want to uh, run on the Friday and the Saturday because, well, Friday we don't have so many lectures, and it means we can go out drinking on Saturday night. <laughs> so uh, there we're going to have a lot of locations. I know, you know, I've, I've started pinging people uh, you know, this week. I mean, we're discussing, you know, of course we've got uh, in Moscow, uh, we could have uh, in Kiev, in Poland, in Berlin, of course the regulars of uh, Madrid, London, uh, Lisbon, we're going to have quite a few locations in and around, uh, uh, well, US at the moment, but I'm working with Jim to get Canada on board. Uh, in the US we'll have San Francisco, Chicago, New York, um, Orlando, and Austin, so uh, we'll Chicago. have a lot more. Yep, Chicago. Yep. Uh, thanks to, of course, Illinois Institute of Technology, who have been supporting us from the very beginning. We're going to have a number of locations in South America and, of course, Australia. We might end up actually having uh, both Melbourne and Brisbane. So, uh, thirty plus uh, locations around the world will be running in parallel. We're hoping to do some special things across uh, the uh, all those locations. So uh, I, I won't say anything yet, but uh, you know, Emil, uh, we're hoping to use his bridge as a connector across uh, all those locations. Uh, and then, of course, we wrap up the whole year in November with TAD Summit, which will be in Lisbon. I can't remember the exact dates now, but it's up on the website. And that'll wrap up the whole year. TAD hacks are all about developers, technology, and creativity. That's it. I mean, that's the whole point. It's just letting those creative juices flow. Just look at all the cool stuff you can do with the technology. Then TAD Summit is all about the commercials, how we make money out of this. So uh, that's you know, we try to keep the marketing and the commercials out. So in the hackathons, we can just have fun, and show all the amazing things that are possible. And then at the summit, we can have those business discussions on how we can get this out into the market, making money for the people who are creating these amazing services. Cool, Alan. Thank you very much. And we'll see you, I think it's March 4th, did we say? Correct. Yep. Okay. March 4th. And uh, until then, we're going to move to the mature audiences only version of the VUC. Thanks, everybody. As I said in IRC, this is our ninth year, and uh, thanks for staying with us. Those of you who have been around for eight years, hello, that's a long time. And uh, it's just a fantastic community. I'm really moved by it and always pleased to meet everybody. So come to Berlin and go to all the TAD hacks and all the TAD summits, every single one of them. Okay. Now get out of here. I mean it. <laughs>